Well, welcome back to Writing 242 Technical Communication. This is the last chapter that we'll be covering in this section on drafting, designing, and revising. And we've covered a, a lot of practical information that we want to be using as we're creating documentation. And so this last chapter is looking at revising and edit editing for usability. And so ultimately, especially for technical communication, we're having written or um, oral type of communication being developed for a specific purpose. And so um, it's important that we revise and make sure that we're thinking about the, the usability of how, what is the intended way um, how this will be used. And so this is gonna be the, the key for, for this chapter. So what we will learn here is it will use the four levels of editing to revise um, documents and presentations. We'll identify strategies for revising your draft by reviewing its subject, purpose, readers, and context of use. And we'll do a substantive edit of the content, organization, and design of your doc document. And finally, we'll copy, edit sentences, paragraphs, headings, and graphics. So a lot of different things that we're going to be thinking about as we're doing the editing and reviewing getting things ready for final release and publication. So um, we want to be doing proofreading for grammar, punctuation, and, and word usage. All of those are, are useful for, for us to help tighten up the, the final product. We'll use copy editing symbols to signal changes to a document. So that could be a helpful way if you have an editor that um, is working with you, they can make different um, things, but and they, you can have a different public, you might even have a publication team that's helping you get to this final level of um, how things are going to be done. You're going to we'll edit documents with transcultural readers in mind. And finally, we'll use document cycle and usability testing to improve the qualities of your documents. You could have um, some sample people review it and that weren't involved in the development and give you their, their feedback. So here are the levels of edit that we're going to be considering. Revising and editing are forms of quality control. So maybe you hadn't thought about this, and this is very much something that happens in the engineering or computer science world is quality control. So approach the, the document from different points of view is, is what we're trying to have. And so first thing is we do revision. So just make sure that the, the story, the, the narrative is, is all there. So that's the first level that we have. Um, the, the second level is um, substantive editing. We play, pay attention to content, organization, and design of the document. Finally, we, we get into the copy editing and help um, get it into a place that we're ready for it to be um, pub publishable. Um, so it concentrates on revising the style for clarity, persuasion, and consistency um, at the sentence and paragraph level. And finally, um, proofreading is catching grammar mistakes, misspellings, and usage problems. So all kinds of different vantage points that we want to be thinking about as we're getting a document ready. So here is a graphical way of um, thinking about the, the levels of, of editing. Um, ideally, writers should always go through all four levels of editing, sometimes through limited time. Um, um, sometimes the limited time determines what level is, is appropriate to finish a, a document. So we can be starting to at, um, allocate time. So there's really should be plenty of time for doing revising. You need to have adequate way of doing the substantial editing to make sure it's, um, it's where it needs to be. You need to have some much, some time for, for copy editing and um, it may, should not take too much time for proofreading. And there is, um, various software packages like Grammarly that, that could be helping out in, in that level. So let's take these one at a time. So revising. So revising is a process of revisioning the document. We consider the, the rhetorical situation, the subject, the purpose, the readers, and the context of use. All of these are important that we need to be thinking about. 
does your subject need to be narrowed or broadened? So think about that. Do we have the, the right type of focus that has happened? Has anything evolved since it was initially kicked off that you're doing this project? Did you limit or expand the scope of your subject? Things like that, purpose, make sure that the document is achieving its purpose. What do you want to have the document accomplish or achieve? Is your document purpose still the same and ha have your purpose become more specific or has it been broadened? In terms of the readers, consider your readers characteristic. Do you know, do you now know more about your primary readers needs? So through your research and your development, this may actually help you to answer that question. Have you fully anticipated your readers' values and attitudes? Have you thought about the, the secondary, tertiary, um, and gatekeeper readers? And finally, for the, the content of use, consider the contents in which your document might be read or used. Consider the physical, economic, political, ethical, and personal corporate corporate and industry related issues that will influence your, your readers. So these are all the kind of things that we want to be thinking about as we're doing the, the revisioning process. Next in the editing process is the substantial editing. Substantive editing should focus on content, organization, and design. So those are the things that we have listed here. So content, we, we look for gaps or digressions in content. So are there gaps where you are lacking proof or support for your claims? Does everything read the, the way it should be in helping you to support your, your claim? Do you need to do more research in support of your, your, your points? And do you have unnecessary information? So that's the first thing for, for content. Um, for organization, a document should conform to a genre and have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. So make sure that we have that proper organization laid out. Have you deviated from the organizational pattern of your genre? Does your introduction idea, uh, identify the subject, purpose, and main points? Does the conclusion restate your main point, reemphasize the importance of the subject, and look to the future? And then finally, for the design, the document should be designed to fit its readers and contents in which it will be used. Is the text readable in the situations and places where people will use it? Does the design reflect your readers' values and attitudes? Does the design properly use principles of, of balance, alignment, grouping, consistency, and contrast? Does the design does the design clarify the, the structure of the text with titles and subheads subheads, and do the graphics support that the text and clarity um, and clarify difficult points? So those are a variety of things we want to be talking about when we're looking at the sub substantive type of editing. The third is um, copy editing, and the goal is to improve the style and the consistency. And so we have four things that we're going to be looking at here when we, we look at the, the elements of the document. So for the sentences, make sure that they are clear and concise. Are the subjects easy to locate? Do verbs express actions? Can we eliminate prepositional phrases in our sentences um, breathing uh, at a breathing length level that you can read it in one breath. That's what we're trying to convey there. So that's for the sentences. For the paragraphs, should su support the specific claims and improve the flow of the text. Does each paragraph have a clear topic sentence that is a claim and support? Do paragraphs need transition or a point sentence? Are subjects aligned? And would transition or transitional phrases help bridge the, the gaps? So that's definitely stuff that we want to make sure that we consider. For headers, should they should be easy to understand and can consistently use. Do headers reflect information that follows? Do headers make documents um, scannable and highlight important information? And are there clear levels of headings? And finally, 
you want to be considering the graphics, make sure that the graphics support the, the written text, check graphics for accuracy, and does each graphic tell a simple story? Does each graphic support written text without replacing it? And are graphics clearly um, titled and reflected by a number as is conveyed in the written text? So that's the third level of editing. And now the, the final one is a proofreading. And this is the one that focuses on the mechanical detail, the grammar, the punctuation, the spelling and, and typographical errors, and finally the, the word uses. So look at the grammar, make sure that we're using the standard type of English grammar that should be considered. Punctuation, sometimes there's a, a variation of what how things should be done. Where are your commas? Um, how are you making sure that you're not having too complicated a sentences, spelling and typographical errors? This is usually fairly easy to catch with um, some type of editor, whether if you're using Word or something like Grammarly, which I mentioned. And finally, the word usage. Um, how are you conveying things with the, the exact words that are in what you're developing here? Um, usage guides explains subtle differences among words. So even that you may be using an interesting word, but you want to verify that it's the right word to use in a situation. So for cross for transcultural editing, make sure that things aren't lost in translations. You want to, to um, consider advice for creating and editing cross cultural documents, use short direct sentences that follow subject, verb, and object over. So those are the main three components that we've already talked about that are the composition for um, a sentence, a good clear sentence. You want to use positive sentences and, and minimize negative sentences. You want to use a limited set of words and avoid humor or jokes. So those are just some of the guidelines for transcultural type of editing. Um, and can, continuing along that line, you want to minimize jargon and slang. Slang is terrible because this is something that's very likely is not going to translate at all. Um, you want to check any sayings, cliches, or idioms. You want to uh, um, avoid obvious metaphors, things that once again may not be understood in a cross-cultural sense. You want to check for slogans and check for product names. All, good information to be thinking about. So for document cycle, cycling and usability testing, we can use document cycling and usability testing to improve the quality of the documents that you're producing. So for cycling, um, when you cycle a document, you pass it among coworkers and supervisors to obtain feedback. So what you're getting is you're getting peer review to get their impression of what you've developed. Document cycling is an important part of quality feedback and, and creating a loop for, for, for doing that. For usability testing, usability testing can be formal or informal. Most usability testing is designed to answer four questions. Can they find it? So can you read and locate on specific type of information that is important? Can they understand it? Can they clearly have an understandability of what you're trying to convey and then feed that back to you in their own words. Can they do it? Um, performance, if there's things that are this, this technical documentation is intended to do, can they actually perform what the, the technical communication is meant to try and help the reader to, to accomplish? And finally, is it safe? So if there's safety criteria that are um, have to be done when you're using a product or service, are they able to clearly identify and make sure that they can comply with that? So finally, we want to be thinking about setting objectives and measuring results. The challenge to the effective usability testing is to identify ob objectives for the document. These objectives could refer to one, how well the users can find the information, two, how well they understand the important ideas that are conveyed in the document, and three, how well they perform the tasks described. Okay, well, that's it for this chapter. Thank you very much.